Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, first of all, apologies from Dr. Amit Khosla that he could not be here. Uh, I'll be taking his talk on how to rule out tuberculosis. Now, first of all, uh, why do we need to rule out tuberculosis? Because there is always a risk of latent TB getting activated when we are going for immunosuppressive, we are suppressing the immune system and there is a risk that the latent TB may get reactivated. Now, coming to a bit of uh, natural history, the picture is a bit blurred. <laughs> that uh, in one to two years, about 10% of the people who are infected by mycobacterium tuberculosis will develop tuberculosis, and the next rest 90% will remain dormant, and they can be reactivated for uh, later. And this is the subset that we are worried of. Now, uh, speaking about uh, what is latent TB infection, basically it's a clinical syndrome which has a positive PPD with no clinical symptoms, a negative chest X-ray, which may basically is because of... Uh, consist of small number of viable bacilli maintained in non-replicating state by the host immunity. Now, uh, while going for immunosuppressions, what drugs should we fear that they can reactivate this latent TB? Steroids, maybe, but not very clear. Immunosuppressive methotrexate and azathioprine, they are not very clear. Uh, but the TNF inhibitors are, uh, have been proven that they can reactivate this latent TB. Now, uh, a bit about tuberculosis. We know that pulmonary tuberculosis is about 80% of all tuberculosis. Extrapulmonary TB consists about 20%. And in this uh, subgroup, 25% have a history of pulmonary TB. 50% have a normal chest X-ray and no evidence of pulmonary TB. And up to 20% may have a negative PPD. Now, uh, for this diagnosis, uh, we have a clinical criteria and a lab criteria. But the diagnosis vary in different countries, and even with different regions of the same country, the diagnosis criteria varies. Now, we have a, a long list of armamentarium of tests that we can do for uh, confirming a presumed ocular tuberculosis. We have the MONTU test, we have the X-ray, ab USG abdomen, CT chest, ELISA, which is not commonly used, quantiferin gold, PCR, smear culture, and histopathological examination. Now, at our center, what we are using is what the protocol has been used by the immunologist, the rheumatologist, and the gastroenterologist. We like to do a MONTU test. Uh, we rely more on a C uh, contrast-enhanced CT of the chest, uh, an ultrasound of the abdomen. And if on them we get anything positive, we do for a... Uh, uh, if some, uh, suppose that we get a positive node on the chest, we go for endobronchial ultrasound with a biopsy for the lymph node, and then the histopathological examination for that. Now, I will be talking about all the tests that I have mentioned. Uh, this is about the PPD. Routine PPD is rarely helpful. There may be false positive in a typical mycobacterium and BCG, uh, and false negative in sarcoid, aging. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this, was a, this is a, from an article of uh, Archives of Ophthalmology of 1990, which said that a patient with uitis and a positive PPD has a 1% likelihood of having tuberculosis. Uh, we know that there's a false positive chances of tuberculin test occurring in person who have been infected uh, non-tuberculosis mycobacterium and received BCG vaccine. Uh, now, what do these tests signify? Montu test, we get different values, less than 10, 10 to 20, greater than 20. This is very variable because every lab has a different subset and they use a different tuberculin unit for uh, doing a test. Some use 5 type tuberculin units, some use 10 tuberculin units. So it varies from lab to lab, and the result will be, can be, uh, the result has to be appreciated in that way. So there are no uh, clear-cut guidelines. And quantiferon gold has to be, uh, when we do a MONTU, it can give a false positive for the quantiferon gold, so these two tests should not be done uh, simultaneously. And I'll be speaking about the PCR. Now, what is the limitation of the tuberculin test? There's a lack of specificity, error, mode of administration, reading, results, and but due to lack of other tests, still indicator of latent TB. This is the test which is most commonly used. Coming to the quantiferon gold, which is the interferon gamma release, I say the RNTCP and the WHO both have said that uh, it is not to be used. Active TB in high burden settings where prevalence of latent TB infection is very high, as in our country. Uh, this is a CDC guidelines regarding uh, tuberculin test and IGRA. This, they said that neither tuberculin uh, test or uh, uh, quantiferon gold can distinguish latent TB from active TB, and neither negative TST or IGRA results are sufficient to exclude TB. Mm. Coming to the PCR part, uh, this is a better test. This has got a high specificity, better sensitivity than microscopy. 
fast results allows identification and investigation of genetic resistance patterns false negative results are known to occur but in clinical case positive results are helpful and negative rules cannot rule out tuberculosis the main disadvantage is being higher cost and limited availability variable sensitivity inferior sensitivity for non respiratory specimen for example for ocular samples does not allow ruling out tuberculosis at all detects only dna uh, newer probes have been uh, developed uh, for ocular use but currently they are not uh, available commercially and hence the practical implications of that are not possible right now uh, <coughs> i'll be showing some screenshots of a study of which is only on ocular tuberculosis that was published in ocular immunology and inflammation in 2015 uh, <coughs> they said that there a need for tb prophylaxis in case of systemic immunoppression is still not defined Uh, tuberculosis must be excluded when considering use of biological such as anti tnf agents given the evidence of increased risk of systemic disseminated tb with the use of these agents uh, but in patients where we are giving prophylaxis uh, tb screening treatment or prophylaxis in patients on anti metabolites or calcineurin uh, inhibitors there are no standard recommendation as of now uh, this is a this is about Uh, patients who have a proven uh, tuberculosis and they were given ATT, if they have a recurrent uveitis, there are no treatment guidelines for such patients. And the positive response to ATT, defined as resolution of uveitis after full course of ATT, has been reported in 60 to 70 percent. But in the rest patients, what should be done? And there are no treatment guidelines as of such. And uh, this is about the quantiferon gold. There is uh, no study that has investigated the outcome of patient with positive quantiferon who did not receive ATT. so basically uh, starting on immunosuppressives we do a montu and chest x ray chest x ray was uh, chest x ray uh, has been used but later on studies have said that hrct is better so we are using a ct chest contrast enhanced chest and a usg abdomen if there comes something comes out positive we start with the treatment and if there is negative we may or may not treat the patient for tb uh, this is a case this is a 40 year old male who presented to us with blurring of vision uh he had a panuveitis with multiple placoid uh, patches of uh, choroiditis uh, this is the uh, angiography showing pinpoint leakages and uh, hyperfluorescence uh, now uh, we have planned to start the patient on immunosuppressives uh, so we got a chest x ray done of the patient so what we could see was there is hilar lymphadenopathy in the chest x ray we got a c c t of the abdomen we could see in large lymph nodes and all so Uh, the, this patient was uh, montu negative and uh, the sputum examination was uh, clear so what we did was we did an endobronchial ultrasound for this patient along with a fna uh, tissue biopsy and uh, the specimen histopathological examination came positive for afb uh, this is the usg abdomen so we started the patient on att first followed by immunosuppressives and uh, we have a very uh, there is a no clear diagnostic criteria that we can call this as a ocular tb it varies from simple choroidal tubercles in this patient and to a tub choroidal granuloma or a tubercloma that has been classically mentioned uh coming to tuberculous uveitis uh, this is taken from a study uh, uh, article published in survey of ophthalmology by dr gupta uh they said that intraocular tuberculosis can ma- mimic several uveitis so the, we need a laboratory support for diagnosis this diagnosing they said there has to be they defined it into two criteria definite and presumed definite said histological examination and culture of the affected tissue uh, with a polymerase chain reaction and evidence of active systemic infection and a presumed one said that there should be a clinical history and ophthalmic findings with ppd or gamma interferon relay, uh, the uh, quantiferon gold chest x ray findings and response to anti tb agents so the clinical features they defined uh, with uh, cellular reaction with posterior synecia snowballs perivascular cuffing multiple granulomas with detached exudative detachment optic disc granuloma and subretinal uh, subretinal abscesses along with uh, investigation of afb from ocular fluid with positive pcr uh, tests uh, systemic in- investigation positive montu active tubercular lesion on radiography extra pulmonary tuberculosis or a therapeutic te- test that said that a positive response to anti tubercular ter- therapy over a period of 4 to 6 weeks now in 2015 there was another study by the dr gupta and they modified the ocular signs that they were mentioned they had taken away the 
part that said intermediate vitis part they have taken but rest they have said that anterior chamber or vitreous along uh, presence of cells in anterior chamber or vitreous with broad posterior synechia with perivasculitis or choroiditis and the other parts are the same now uh, this is the proposed classification of intraocular tuberculosis that is not this has not been accepted right now but this is the proposed classification and we are wary of these two groups these two groups before starting immunomodulators or immunosuppressives we will try to treat them for uh, with anti att so the confirmed group as we know that will be at least one clinical sign suggestive of intraocular tb and microbiological confirmation probable would be at least one clinical sign suggestive of iotb and uh, and other etiologies have to be excluded uh, and there would be evidence of x-ray consistent with tb infection and uh, microbiological confirmation of sputum or extraocular site and the third would be an immunological evidence of tb uh, infection <coughs> currently uh, we understand that there are no gold standard treatments to diagnose intraocular tuberculosis hence the classification should be this is from the same article and they said that the classification needs to be reviewed for further test and uh, we need to have uh, more tests that we can validation studies can be taken in the future uh, to summarize whatever uh, i have told spoken about it till now there is a uh, no pathognomonic ophthalmic challenges to a diagnosis of ocular tuberculosis no pathognomonic ophthalmic findings similarity with other cases of uitis invasive of invasiveness of obtaining tissue sample and limitation of available diagnostic test thank you